Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. So Philip right now, he's doing backflips because he's wanted me to do this for a while. Philip, your dreams have just come true. We're going to do Gary Gianni. <laughs> Philip is obsessed with Italian artists. This is what he tells me. <laughs> but anyway, um, I actually don't know Gary Gianni's work that well, to be honest. The, the only stuff that I've really seen are uh, backup stories and I think Hellboy. Um, but I, I've never really been able to follow his work that closely because uh, I never really know where it's at. So um, I picked this up and we'll take a look at Gary Gianni's Monster Men and other scary stories. And uh, the cover is great. So let's go into full screen mode here and uh, let's get down to it. So the one thing that I do know about Gianni's work is generally speaking, it is printed in black and white. And um, also, generally speaking, it's very, very detailed. Uh, he has a like kind of a vintage uh, approach to his like line work and stuff like that. And it's very cool. The guy can definitely draw his ass off. So let's do this. I like the the crossing of the bones, anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for people interested in the blaster kid piece, I, I will be finishing it today. So. Um, I've got to run some errands after I shoot this video and uh, then I'm gonna come home I'm gonna finish penciling it which I'll record and then uh, ink the rest of it and, and it'll be done by this afternoon or early this evening and uh, then I'll, I'll narrate those videos and put them up but it'll be nice to have it done I'm kind of like I'm I'm getting to the point where I just want to see it finished and I, I, I've already got the next one laid out in my mind so I, I'm excited to get onto that so this is very very cool it's interesting because when you look at it small, it actually like they almost look like people, and then you start to realize that it's these creepy beasts. And this is all real nice. Yeah, he's really good. Looks like an interesting story. This guy's got a pretty cool design to him. There's just so much great art. It's just insane. But uh Yeah, this is wild. I don't know if Gary is on um, Instagram or anything like that, but uh, would be cool to see his pencils, how much he puts down before he draws these. It's funny because these look like rat skulls almost. Maybe they are. Like rat, rat people. Do they have the two front teeth? Yeah, you know what? Those might be rat skulls. Or like that he referenced rat skulls. That's cool. Some faces in this. I was honestly very, very tempted to, to, to do J. Lee Dark Tower. I watched Dark Tower movie last night. And I had been watching, listening to uh, book reviews of the Dark Tower on YouTube yesterday while working. Um, and it's funny because it's Gunslinger. Uh, <laughs> leave it to my YouTube videos to tie in. It's the funniest thing. I know I, we always, I always point it out. But it is funny that I was talking about that. And all of a sudden we get a cowboy. But... Uh, yeah, so I was. I thought it would be fun to look at some of that stuff because the movie was very, very different than. Um, I mean, it's a lot of uh, material in the books to to get in one movie. But uh, yeah, I was like curious to check that stuff out. <coughs> it had been a little while, so um, yeah, this is all really cool. It's interesting. He's he's does a little more cartoony stuff than I would have thought. Uh, and the cartoony meaning just a, a like a caricature of these these little beastie guys. It's it's cool. Like I said, I'm just not that familiar with his work. I had some other recommendations, and they were also artists that I was even less familiar with. So when, when I get those, I mean, I definitely... I, I It's hard for me to do a video if I don't know anything about the artist. I mean, I could do it and just sort of look at the art and ooh and ah, but um, it helps if I have some sort of grounding to do these. But, you know, I'll do my best. He does nice layouts, too. I have to say that the the... The flow of the pages is pretty good for how dense the art is. You know, it's possible that he can get through this stuff pretty fast. I know someone on, um, it was Pedro on Instagram, was saying that uh, I had mentioned that when I did my heavy metal story, I did um, 12 pages of pencils and inks in 20 days. And he's like, and I said it was a tight deadline, and he didn't understand that fully penciling and fully inking 12 pages is kind of like 24 days worth of work 
And uh, look, this is my advice for anyone who's getting into drawing and wants to draw comic books in general. When you're, when you're learning, use all the tools that you can to help your drawings look better. Take as much time as it takes to get your pages looking as nice as possible and try to learn as much as you can along the way. I mean, that's where I'm at right now. It's like I have to realize that I don't have hundreds of thousands of comic book pages under my belt. In fact, if I counted, I probably have less than 25 um, all total. So it's like, I can't, I can't, there's no way to really expedite, like sort of getting to the awesomeness. It's like you take it sort of one bite at a time and uh, just always being interested in learning. But yeah, I mean, in general, I mean, I wouldn't spend a month on one page. I mean, I suppose you could, but um, you know, the bottom line really is is try to learn how to draw and start start and finish pieces and then um uh you know get used to that just the process of doing it and knowing that oh, okay it takes me uh 10 hours to do a page it takes me 30 hours to do a page it takes me 60 hours to do a page whatever it ends up being and your your process may be different maybe you do pencils only Maybe you do pencils to colors. Maybe you do it all digital and kind of go from a sketch to finished, whatever it is. But you'll start to know your workflow and, and your your pacing, you know, that you can do a page in X amount of hours. And then you can worry about speed. Like, do you feel like you're too slow? Well, then you should speed up, you know. If, it's, if it seems to be the sticking point for you not getting work is that you're too slow. I, I, there's always room for great pencilers. This is what I've always said on this YouTube channel is is all the rules go out the window if you can really draw well or if you have exciting art that you show to someone or your fans uh, just love it then all the rules are broken they will absolutely wait for you to be awesome within reason you can't vanish forever and sort of pop in and pop out some artists do that it's a weird thing where it's like you could be a fan of someone and all of a sudden it's like you go, man, I haven't seen that person draw in like two years. What's going on? And there's a bunch. It's not just, you know, one or two people. There's really, really great artists that, that have, um, you know, done little bodies of work. You know, maybe they work for a couple of years and then they kind of vanish for a few years and then they come back and uh, they always do great stuff. But, you know, anyway, so let's get back to Gianni. But uh, yeah, always try to do your best work at first. And always try to improve. That's my sage advice. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Every piece that I do, I want it to be better than the next if possible. Which, there's plenty of room for growth, so. <laughs> yeah, these hands are cool. This is an interesting story, so it's definitely keeping up with the monsters um, theme. That would be freaky, to have a bunch of hands chasing after you. They're very neatly cut here. It's a little more meaty, meaty, gritty here. But but when you see them from this angle, they look uh, almost like they're um, like magically removed, which uh, you know, hands running around on their own attacking things would have a little bit of magic in them. Anyway, it's interesting. At times, I get like little vibes of different influences that I wouldn't think of in his in his work from from what I know of it. But but this is the magic of doing storytelling pages is that no matter what you might do in an illustration once you have to start drawing stuff like this it pulls you into different ways and in some ways does actually create a style for you it's a very interesting thing but it's like you know you might do like con sketches or sketches in your sketchbook and they really have a flavor of artist x y and z or maybe just one artist um but generally speaking once you get into like storytelling pages um I think you, you almost just uh, naturally start to have to pull through all of your mental library of anything that you've seen, um, and that doesn't have to necessarily be in comics, but you know what I mean, uh, to help you solve the problems of the script, the script to the page. So it's like all of a sudden it's like, oh, we need a rainy house on a hill, and you immediately think rights in. And then it's like, but... Uh, inside the house it's like mc escher painting and the stairways go all these different ways and then all of a sudden you're going that direction but a superhero shows up and then you're thinking about you know your favorite superhero artist and it's like that all starts to blend you know that's that's what gets really exciting about it for me this is what i would say is is also when you're working on your stuff the the growth curve that i've seen for most artists is the first year you're just working it out years two through three 
are kind of like where you start to really cut your teeth. And around years three to six is when you really start to see artists getting pretty good and comfortable and stuff like that. And, and you know, if you were to come up with some sort of page count um, of what the amount of work they might have done would be, um, this is really interesting. You know, you figure maybe 100 or 200 pages a year or more, but, but you know, over five years, that's about 1,000 pages, somewhere between 800 and 1,000 pages. So that will definitely help you cut your teeth and get confident. And you'll be able to work out a lot of bugs during that time. This is cool. And you figure Gianni, as far as I know, he's been working in comics now for at least 20 years, maybe even longer. But, um... Yeah, I don't remember what issue of Hellboy. I think he would sometimes do pinups in the back, and then he maybe did like a short story or something for Dark Horse. That was the first time I saw his work. This is cool. Again, having to draw something like this might pull you in a different direction. This is all cool. Oh, I didn't even see the village down here. That's pretty wild. These types of ships can be huge. We have a harbor where I live, and one time I was walking down the hill, and I could see the harbor from really, really far away. And honestly, some of the cruise liners were bigger than the downtime, downtown buildings. It was crazy how huge some of those ships are. I know that one looked a little more vintage kind of Titanic-esque. This is cool. So this won't be a super long video because I actually do have a lot to do today because I need to go and run errands and then come back and work. So I was going to try to keep this at about 20 minutes. But this will wet your teeth with Gary Gianni and then you can uh, look for more of his work if you're not familiar with it. And uh, if you are, maybe you'll revisit it. And I'll have links to anything I can find where he might be online. This is cool. It's a really interesting idea for a character <laughs> oh that's cool silent as the grave oh man that's wild Man, this guy is definitely not intimidated to draw anything. <laughs> you figure he's writing this for himself, I think. I, I, I got the impression that maybe it was 100% him. So, yeah, you've got to love doing stuff like this to be able to get up for it page after page. That's for sure. Man, that's a lot of people in this scene. Holy smoke, what kind of unclean monkey is this? <laughs> I'm afraid it's more than a monkey, friend. Oh, wow. That's pretty neat. Man, it's so crazy. I could never imagine working that rough. It's just not in my DNA. It would... You have to have so much confidence to finish a drawing with this much of a scratchy line and know that it's going to be okay when it when it finishes and it's it's kind of the look that you're going for but yeah that's wild I had to ink um charles vest one time for a book that was late and i think he had been inking himself or something like that it was kind of art like this and i i think at the time i was actually inking travis if i remember correctly and oh my god the first page i did i just i got done with it and i hated it i thought it looked so bad and uh it just wasn't, it didn't have this sort of scratchy, old-timey feel. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if it's like, if I would, I'd have to like use my left hand or something to do it. <laughs> my right hand has too much, has too much control. It's like, I, I do actually, it's funny when I ink sometimes, I do actually try to make my hand uh, sort of unstable so that it will do more waggly lines and stuff like that. But um, yeah, to really get that scribbly look, it's like you, 
you know, I think if you did it long enough, it would seem more natural too. That's the thing is I just haven't developed it. So the, the irony is my sketches are really a mess. That's the funny thing is when I do pencil sketches, they're actually almost too sketchy. So it's a weird, like, <laughs> and then when I, when I try to finish the drawing there, they're super clean. Someday it'll blend. I have confidence. Silvestri early on was pretty tight. If you really go back way before his X Men work at look at look at the like year or two before that, he actually drew pretty pretty um, accurately. And then as he got better, it became more um, sort of representational and a little more um, sort of impressionistic. But he he had such a solid uh, foundation at that point that uh, he was able to um, you know forego connecting all the lines and having everything be so precise. But, you know, again, that's a few years into his career. This is cool. I like this. This is nice. I really like the lighting on this. It's cool that he didn't put any detail in this background, so it's nice and white. And then this becomes very graphic. This is all cool. It's funny because stuff like this is kind of where Silvestri is going with his Batman book. Funny enough, speaking of Mark, Mark the Dark, um, yeah, if, if when that book comes out, I mean, it's going to be kind of done in a style reminiscent of this, not exactly like this, but pretty pretty damn close, um, just with Silvestri's structure and you know more uh, superheroic um, probably approaches to layout and stuff like that. This is all really nice. But yeah, that, that book will be something. And hopefully they do two versions of it. I mean, I, I have no issue with it being a color comic book. But I really do hope that... Um, and I, I think that DC would. Um, that well, They'll do a black and white version too. Because um, that would be great. I still, you know, and speaking of that, it's like I want DC to do a gallery gallery editions of some of those Sean Gordon Murphy books. I don't really care which. I would love for them to do... Um, American Vampire, because uh, I really like the art in that, but um, yeah, that would be great to have um, a couple of gallery size edition black and white books of Sean's work, and that Silvestri book when it comes out one day. This is cool. At times I get like a little bit of a Windsor McKay vibe in his stuff, but he renders so much that it sort of isn't as apparent. Um, but it's probably just incidental, but it's he lays stuff out so differently that it doesn't have the feel as much, but some of the structure of things looks a little like it. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Man, they've got a lot going on in this room. It's like, you don't want to be them. We've got mummies and <laughs> this big-headed dude. A couple of guys just watching. They're probably eating popcorn. <laughs> then the dude in the wheelchair. This might be the end of it. I think this was the, this might be the last page. So hopefully that was fun. Like I said, I, I... Oh, no, there's a little bit more. I think there's one more story. This is cool. I didn't want to do the whole book because uh, you know, I wanted to have surprises for people, but I wanted to give everyone at least a taste of what's going on. This is really, really cool. I love forest scenes and stuff like that. It's always trees and weeds and stuff like that. Always fun to draw. Okay, maybe this is the end. Oh, yeah. And this. So this is one of the first pieces that I saw Gianni. Oh, it's funny. He's actually drew that character. I forgot about that. So I do recognize him. Okay, so Monster Men stories originally appeared as backup. Okay, so these might be a collection of those. And Under the Sea, so... Yeah, it was a long time ago. So 20 years of drawing, more than that, obviously, but I'm saying 20, 23 years of drawing professionally. But it's cool. It is cool. Oh, yeah, I like this. Kind of Nosferatu-ish. is nice too again I always appreciate people that can do this crooked stuff I think it's really really fun to see 
that was interesting. The channel that I was watching on YouTube where he was doing the um, Dark Tower reviews, he did a review of 30 Days of Night. And I'm friends with Ben Templesmith, and I, I kind of know Steve Niles. Not really, but I, I've met him a few times. But uh, um, I, I, I do consider Ben Templesmith a friend. But it was cool hearing someone review their work. And uh, um, he really liked Ben's stuff and thought it was interesting. The guy did a Batman Damned review, too, with uh, Libra Mayhem and Brian Azzarello. It was, it was a good review. It sounded interesting. I haven't had a chance to read it or really... I've seen, I think, the first two issues, but uh, I need to pick it up. I wanted to wait and get the hardcover. Okay, that's it. All right, you guys have a great day. I'm going to get to work, and uh, I'll probably upload the final video um, tomorrow for the um, the Blaster Kid piece. And then, look, I'm I'm very, very excited to just get going on the next. And um, like I said, there's some surprises that I, I haven't fully revealed about everything that's going on. So uh, it'll, it'll be fun. There'll be a little bit of uh, like a story along with the piece. So, okay, have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.